All right, damn the introduction, Mark. You know what it is. Four on fivers, Evan Giddings, Mark Grandy, all that good stuff. The 49ers of San Francisco just moments ago, not a moment after I walked through the door to my home, I still got my gym shorts on. I smell terrible, Mark. I just managed <laughs> to even pick up some, some dinner on the way home. I cannot believe what just happened. Christian McCaffrey is a San Francisco 49er. We're going to break down all the details, the ramifications, everything it could mean for this weekend, as well as moving forward. But Mark, first response, you haven't even left the office yet. What's going on, man? Oh my, I'm shocked. I mean, first things that, you know, of course, I have Adam Schefter tweet notifications on, so I saw it immediately. But my first thought, even though I have his notifications on, was, is this like, a troll account like I, I gotta be 100 percent sure because this has gotten people in trouble in the past it was not a troll account it was indeed adam Schefter. ian rapaport quickly backed him up and it's 100 percent certain christian mccaffrey uh is on his way to the bay area to become the newest san francisco 49er stanford star returns to the south bay where he dominated football fields for a long time i cannot believe it we've talked about it a couple of times on the pod evan over the last couple of weeks I am shocked the 49ers are going all in. They believe they're good enough in the NFC to, to win this conference. And uh, they are putting their money where their mouth is right now because this is really the anti-Kyle Shanahan era move. And uh, I, I am shocked that they pulled it off. No, that that's the first place my mind went to is this is not what Kyle Shanahan does. And no. we had talked throughout this entire season about the fact that he traded up three first round picks to get Trey Lance. That leaves you with very little capital moving forward, especially in the 2023 draft. Well, you got even less now. You got less because you traded a total of Four draft picks, one of them being a second rounder in 2023, a third rounder in 2023, as well as a fourth round pick in 2023, and as well as a fifth round pick in 2024. But just looking at what the Niners have left, Mark, in 2023 alone, they don't have a draft pick until the third round. They do not have one in the fourth now as well. And they basically it's the third and the fifth. It's just it's mind-boggling to see them take what has been sort of orchestrated and and um, set up as a Rams-like approach. We have seen yep. the Los Angeles Rams go all in each of the previous two or three years, and the San Francisco 49ers and Kyle Shanahan are walking right down the same road because they believe that the NFC right now is clearly – open for them to compete for a Super Bowl, and Christian McCaffrey might just be the weapon that could get them over the top. And it, it's shocking. It's amazing. It is completely against what Shanahan has done the majority of his tenure in San Francisco, but it has to make fans feel great about the direction that this season potentially could go in. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's. The biggest move besides um, you can make the case, maybe it's bigger than trading, you know, up for the second over or the, the the third overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft. I mean, it's right up there with it. You're getting a rookie you don't know much about, but you're getting a proven superstar running back. The only question throughout his entire career is the health. And you mentioned, you know, the, the Rams model screw draft picks. Give us stars. We'll make the contracts work. And in this case, the money, not much of an issue this year. It does get a little more murky as, you know, the season goes on. He's under contract for a number more years. The 49ers can keep him around if they want to and if they want to pay him the amount of money that he's owed in the future. But this year, it's it's less than a million dollars. The Niners are owing McCaffrey. It's next to nothing. But what allowed this to happen, Evan, uh, at least what made it easier for the 49ers to stomach is all of the extra third round compensatory draft picks that they have had over the last few years. You think Robert Sala being hired to the uh, by the Jets as their head coach, Mike McDaniel to the Dolphins as their head coach, uh, Martin Mayhew, uh, uh, you know, lesser known to the Washington Commanders recently. They got compensatory third round picks for all of those hires by other teams coming from their roster. And you're able to replenish picks and, and make a move like this possible. Because if the Niners didn't have those compensatory picks, if they were left, you know, completely with nothing left in the 2023 NFL draft, maybe had to give up more into the future. Who knows? They do not make this move. So you have to credit, I think, the 49ers philosophy and their system, you know, 
creating and, and developing coaches that are, are, you know, being hired elsewhere to give them those picks to make a move like this happen. One, to make it even possible. And then two, for them to have, um, you know, the ability and, and the confidence to make a move like this. I think you got to credit them all the way around because they're uh, certainly going for it a year where their starting quarterback gets hurt. They're trying to win it all. And, and I think you have to applaud them for that. No, you do. And, and as much as I, I do want to give them credit for, you know, for creating those picks essentially with the coaching tree of Kyle Shanahan, um, this is a move that I honestly, it seems like they're making no matter what, because you you don't have anything. I, I know you have a couple of picks here and there, but without a first, without a second, without one of your thirds now, you're basically you're basically punting on next year's draft. If you're looking at top tier talent, sure they've found you know gems in, in in later rounds prior, but you're basically punting on the 2023 draft because you have gone all in on this season. And I find it so interesting the way that Kyle Shanahan has you know, kind of maneuvered from the beginning of this year where it's, okay, what's the future going to be with Trey Lance? He's our guy. Then he goes down. Then Jimmy gets brought back in as an insurance policy, one in which now is looking like an even better move than it already was. And then you say, okay, well, right now we're three and three. We don't know exactly which way this week is going to go. We could be above. We could be below 500. But we will make sure that for the rest of this season, we have the best possible chance to maximize the winning window with this team that is loaded on defense, which has weapons on the outside, which has now a star-studded man in the backfield, Christian McCaffrey, one of the most dynamic players and creative players in the game, like you mentioned. I mean, I think we first start with Mark. What could this offense look like with Christian McCaffrey? Maybe not this weekend. It's been reported that he's going to fly in on Friday. We're currently recording this podcast, an emergency pod for the 415ers on Thursday night. He'll fly into San Francisco on Friday. Christian McCaffrey has already spoken with Kyle Shanahan. According to reports, he will be eligible and available to play this weekend, likely in red zone packages, and then we'll ramp up from there, according to Ian Rappaport of NFL Network. But what do you think that this offense could look like? You know, maybe not this weekend, but with Kyle Shanahan finally having, I mean, just an absolute, maybe the best weapon he's ever had at his disposal. You, you could certainly make that case. And I, I mean, I think when I first think of, of what Christian McCaffrey does for this offense is it makes it so much easier to get the ball to everyone else. And obviously you're going to give the ball to Christian McCaffrey and he is going to do a lot. Can you imagine, let's say Jimmy Garoppolo lines up in the shotgun. On one hip, you have Debo Samuel. On the other hip, you have Christian McCaffrey. And imagine opposing defenses looking at that and trying to figure out what the hell to do. Because I, if I was on the other side of the ball, I would be at a loss. N not only those two, but you have, you know, George Kittle lined up on one side of the line. You have Brandon Ayuk out wide. I mean... The Niners have such incredible weapons and, you know, not just your everyday run of the mill, you know, star receiver. You have players who can beat you in multiple different ways. You maybe have the two most unique offensive weapons in the game in Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey. They are as good of running backs as they are wide receivers. You have the two of them together in the same offense with a mind like Kyle Shanahan who draws up plays in, you know, it's like his his fantasy is having players like this. He's drawing up plays on the back of, you know, napkins that he got from his, you know, takeout place down the street from his house or whatever. This is his dream. And he has both of these guys on the same team, potentially lining up in the same backfield but behind next to Jimmy Garoppolo, I mean, it's going to make defenses, th their heads explode. The possibilities that this allows the 49ers and their offense and what it allows Kyle Shanahan to then scheme up and play and, and call, um, the, the possibilities are endless. And I am just so incredibly eager to see, maybe not this week, as you mentioned, but a couple of weeks down the line, how this offense changes in terms of its versatility and, and what that might mean for the future of, of the team going forward. Because I, I'm not sure, no matter who the quarterback is, how easy it's going to be to slow down this team now. And it's not something that monetarily 
is a costly trade for the 49ers. That's something I do want to mention as well. The fact that even though it is a heavy price, it is four picks. It is a second, a third, along with a fourth this upcoming year in 2023, a fifth round pick in 2024. They only owe Christian McCaffrey this season in 2022, $646,000 of 2022 cap space. I mean, look, Carolina basically did whoever was going to get Christian McCaffrey. I know the bills were rumored to be in it. They were at one time, the front runner, clearly Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch, that entire front office found a way to usurp the leaders for the Christian McCaffrey in these sweepstakes that have been moving throughout the league, but they did it without having to pay him. We'll deal with essentially the 49ers will the money down the line of the next potentially three seasons. And we'll dig into that deeper and deeper as the season moves on, of course, but McCaffrey is, and and you had my mind spinning, especially the the Debo. And that's just an, an ultimate, um, you know, kind of trigger when you think of Debo Samuel. You think of a guy who last year became potentially the best weapon in football with the with the ball in his hands, no matter how he was going to get it from the slot, from the outside, from the backfield. Christian McCaffrey has already had himself a 1,000-yard rushing season and a 1,000-yard receiving season in the same year. That is hallowed ground, the likes of Roger Craig, of course. But what, it, at least where my mind went immediately was, he's he, he's just a better version of, of Debo Samuel at this point. When he is healthy, when he's on the field, he is a more dynamic, he's a better route runner. He's a better, he's a better pass catcher. Um, he can do things out of the backfield. This guy had four over 400 touches in, I believe it was the 2020, or pardon me, 2019 Ridiculous. season. And that was for a team that was relatively average that had nothing else going offensively. Now he is in a place where no one's going to be focused on him as much as he was in Carolina. He's going to have others in the, with the likes of Debo, Ayuk. Kittle. I mean, Jeff Wilson Jr. has been running the ball well. He'll likely continue to be in the rotation. There are so many different pieces offensively that take pressure off of what McCaffrey could do. And that's why I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not putting the cart before the horse. I'm not saying this guy's going to run up 2,400 yards this season, but if he stays on the field, this guy is a game changer that could be the difference between you winning one playoff game, maybe multiple, and potentially a Super Bowl. That's why Kyle Shanahan makes this move. And, you know, that's all true. And the Niners have had opportunities to make moves like this in the past as well. I mean, we've talked about the Rams and this is kind of their M.O. And and what they're at their Super Bowl parade in February, their GM was wearing a, a T-shirt that said, what, F those picks or, or something like that. Like, that's what they do. They're going to go and get talent. They'll give you any pick you want. Doesn't matter. They'll take the proven talent over, you know, the the wild card of what a, a draft pick could be. And the 49ers have been really, really hesitant to do that. They have held on to their draft picks for the most part that the Trey Lance and now this trade are the two major exceptions, but they have been hesitant to make moves like this. And this is a big one. And, you know, we, we can talk a lot about what this move means for the offense, but I am just shocked that this was a move that Kyle Shanahan felt that he needed to do because he is proven time and time again. And he's been searching for a running back. He spent some high draft picks on running backs. They have not panned out. Elijah Mitchell, a late round pick. He's been good, but he's been injured as often as he's been healthy early in his career, unfortunately. Uh, but Kyle Shanahan has turned nobodies into, you know, reliable running backs in this scheme. The fact that he feels the need to do this, I think, is interesting. And maybe it's Shanahan admitting and, and maybe it's him changing his mind. Maybe he does feel the need. And, and McCaffrey is clearly a unique weapon at the running back position. The, maybe the most unique you know, running back we've seen in the NFL in a really, really long time. But the fact that he, at this point, making this trade is openly admitting that he needed more out of his running back of the position, he needed more talent. Maybe it's him admitting, you know, some shortcomings on his part because he he has, you know, proven time and time again that he does not need this kind of talent to be productive on offense, specifically in the run game. And, you know, it, it 
Kyle Shanahan hasn't always been one to admit his mistakes and admit his shortcomings in moments like this. So I think it's not only a giant step for the 49ers and their offense and their ability to compete this year, but it also might be a major point of growth for Kyle Shanahan in, you know, his head coaching tenure for the 49ers admitting, Hey, I need a little bit more help. I need a little bit more talent offensively and Christian McCaffrey will deliver that and more. Well, if this is the way that Kyle Shanahan admits fault and admits that he's wrong, um, <laughs> I hope that he's wrong every single game. I hope that he's wrong every single year. I hope that he is wrong until the end of his time in San Francisco, because if that is what it turns into, a la one of the best running backs in the game of football, one of the most dynamic weapons in the National Football League, then yes, Kyle Shanahan, please tell me sorry every single day of the week and three times on Sunday. Yeah, no, I mean, good point. Do it for, you know, every other position now on your team. Please. <laughs> yeah. And then the team will be good to go. But yeah, man. But but it's it's interesting you bring that up because, whew, okay, I got to take a breath here. Uh, heart rate is 160 over 20. I am very excited, as are most 49er fans, about Christian McCaffrey coming to San Francisco and what potentially could be, especially this season. Now, the other side of the coin mark is, when you do set yourself up with a third and a fifth for next year, you have already gone all in essentially on Trey Lance. There's a lot of people that frowned upon that decision, that looking back on it, it has yet to pay off. Kyle Shanahan, again, is being aggressive. If it works, if you are the Los Angeles Rams of 2021, if you do win the Super Bowl, you get all the credit. You get the parade, you get the confetti, you get the love, you get the rings. But if you don't, I am not quite sure what Kyle Shanahan is going to do because you set yourself up for a very dangerous feud without much room to improve your roster should you miss on McCaffrey or like each of the past three seasons, or pardon me, two seasons with McCaffrey in which he has played a total of 10 starts prior to this year. If he does get hurt, then the critics, you know, all the jackals are going to come for Shanahan. So this is a very risky move, which does demand respect, which does demand people to give Kyle Shanahan credit. But also, it sets up for a situation where if it does not work out, people are going to be coming down on Kyle Shanahan even harder than they were before. And that's where I really got to wrestle with my emotions and decide if it's something that I love because it's gutsy or I don't because, like I said at the top of the podcast, you did punt on next year's draft. I, I love it. That you're not going to change my mind about that. I didn't think the Niners were going to do it, um, but I, I I love them taking that risk that you're talking about. I think I think it's an admitting um, one that they believe with a talent like Christian McCaffrey. Of course, if he stays healthy, that's the big if. But they believe because of this move, it's it's proven to me that they believe they can win a Super Bowl. It, it's it's within reach. And specifically, it means they can compete in the NFC. We've talked a lot about how the NFC is pretty run of the mill right now. The Eagles are separating themselves. You can say what you want about, you know, the Vikings and the Giants, if you want, a one loss team at this point. But really, there's the Eagles and then everyone else kind of right along with each other. So they believe with Christian McCaffrey, they are right up there with the Eagles and have a very good chance to win the NFC. And you get to the Super Bowl, who knows what happens. It's worth that shot. It's also admitting to me, in my opinion, that the 49ers know that their Super Bowl window is right now. Not necessarily just this year right now, but it's the next few years. And you have Christian McCaffrey under contract for the next few years. It obviously will cost more money next year. I believe he's he's uh, uh, or he's or owed $11.8 million next year, eleven point eight. The year after, $12 million following that. The cap hit. Uh, is more than that, but that's what his base salary the next three years after this one. So he's owed more. You're going to have to do some, you know, shuffling to get all that in against the cap, but you can do that. It happens all the time in the NFL. But this proves to me that the Niners, they believe they need to act now because of all the talent that they have on their roster, all the fat contracts that they're already paying their stars. 
that will come up at some point. They believe if they want to win a Super Bowl, they need to be all in now in the next couple of years. Because if they don't go all in now in the next couple of years and they don't win, you fast forward three years from now, you never know what the future is going to hold, but they're not going to have as good of an opportunity to compete and win a Super Bowl a few years down the road as they do right now. Just looking at the way the NFL works, looking at the players on their roster who are in their primes at this moment, and a few who are maybe entering the end of their prime. Trent Williams comes to mind. He's phenomenal, but he's getting up there in age. The Niners are admitting they have a fantastic chance to win the Super Bowl in the next few years, and this move means they're going all in to do that. Screw the future at this point. You'll worry about that when you get there. Get me a Super Bowl right now is what John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan, Jed York, and this entire organization is saying, and this move gets them a step closer. It gets you a big step closer, like a, a quantum leap potentially closer. <laughs> like I, I do think that's how good Christian McCaffrey is. And like you mentioned, that's how good this roster is at this point. I know they're banged up. I know there's injuries. But if you get some of those pieces back, two of which they're going to get back this weekend against the Kansas City Chiefs and Trent Williams, who you mentioned, along with Nick Bosa, you pair them with you know a guy who his first couple of years in the league is on. You could you could pencil him into Canton. Some people are already saying he has. Also, this is the thing that I'm curious to see how Christian McCaffrey is able to quickly adjust to Kyle Shanahan's scheme and how Shanahan could be able to unlock even a different level of Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey has not played for a winning football team since his rookie season. He has not played around talent like the ones in San Francisco since he was a rookie. They were 11-5 and five since then. Carolina has been putrid, especially this season. And he hasn't played, you know, alongside an offensive mind like Kyle Shanahan's. I mean, just imagine what he was able to do in Carolina. And I'm, I'm not trying to disrespect, you know, the coaches that they've had there over the last few years, but probably they pale in comparison, at least from an offensive mind standpoint to Kyle Shanahan. I mean, I'm sure he has an ability to get a little bit more out of McCaffrey than perhaps some others. Well, and but that's why Carolina, I know looking back on a 2020 is a terrible decision, but that's why they brought in Matt Rule because he was touted as this offensive mind from Baylor that could potentially take a Carolina offense to the next level. Kyle Shanahan has proven that he can do that and he can do it at the highest level. So now you give him a weapon with an offense that this year has been struggling and talk about an adrenaline shot. Like, my God, we have no clue what the 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 positive you know, followings of this is going to be the impact it's going to have on the rest of the locker room who has already been on board, I think, with what Kyle has been preaching, with what Jimmy Garoppolo, despite his limitations, has been as a leader. And now you give them a shot in the arm of Christian McCaffrey, an all-pro running back at his best. And this year so far, I know that the last two years have been marred by injuries. Grant, granted, some of them fluke injuries. This year, he has played 85% of the snaps for Carolina. So, so far through six games, he's demonstrated that he can stay on the field. And if he can continue to do that, and Kyle Shanahan can continue to manage his load the way he has with running backs in the past and get them set to peak at the right time, which hopefully is going to be in the playoffs, then this team all becomes all of a sudden very, very scary in an NFC that I think both you and I feel like is more open than it has been maybe in the last five to 10 years. Oh, it's absolutely wide open right now. And, you know, the, the path to the playoffs is is win the NFC West. And I think with this move, the Niners are, are by far the favorites to do that. We've talked a lot about Christian McCaffrey's injury history. Uh, a lot has been said about that, not only by us, but but by every football fan and, and media member, you know, across the world. Um, I think, you know, we're especially this week, of course, we're not going to see a, a ton of Christian McCaffrey, I would imagine, on Sunday against the Chiefs. But the Niners also considering the talent around them. I mean, Elijah Mitchell is on his way back. Jeff Wilson Jr. has proven, you know, to be able to fill in and, you know, now with a, a star running back like Christian McCaffrey ahead of him, he'll be fine, you know, as a change of pace back, getting a couple of carries every game if, you know, while um, Elijah Mitchell works his way back. 
we will not see the 49ers offense run Christian McCaffrey into the ground. He's not going to get 40 touches a game. He's not going to get 30 touches a game. That's just not the way that the Niners offense works in the first place either. So I, I would say, you know, injury history is injury history. If you want to call him injury prone, maybe he's just had bad luck, whatever you want to say. What I will say is I think the chance for an injury to Christian McCaffrey is probably lessened with the 49ers than with some other teams, specifically the Carolina Panthers, who had a tendency because of the way that their team was built, not a lot of stars on offense, not the most unique offensive scheme. Uh, They tended to give him the ball a lot, which, you know, you could probably argue and you'd probably be right, uh, was a big factor in why he got hurt as often as he did and suffered as, you know, major injuries as he did. I'm not saying it won't happen in San Francisco, but I would say it's probably less likely, and the Niners will certainly be wary to not wear him out. They want to protect their investment. We, we've talked a lot about you know draft picks don't matter as much in the NFL nowadays, but still, it's, it's a big investment for the 49ers and a big chance that they're taking. The worst thing that could possibly happen is an injury to Christian McCaffrey. So I think the Niners will be very cautious in how often they use Christian McCaffrey moving forward, considering they've already been snake bitten by injuries, you know, more times than you can count the last few years. So I think the Niners will be able to keep him healthy, at least perhaps a better chance of it than maybe he, he had in Carolina. Well, this is why you subscribe to the four one fires three times a week, maybe sometimes four, maybe sometimes <laughs> five. If Kyle Shanahan trades for Christian McCaffrey, we will be giving you content all night long. I mean, like I said at the top, Mark, I haven't changed my shirt. I'm I'm sweaty. I'm stinky. I just I have to get we we got to get on. We got to get the people what they want. Absolutely. I mean, long day for both of us. I'm I'm still here at the station after our. Uh... We're recording here just after what nine fifteen on a on a Thursday night. Uh, the show I work on ended at six. We recorded a, a, a different episode, and then this news broke. Uh, it is wild, but I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. I mean, the, you think of uh, of moments, you know, as a fan or as a you know a person following a team. I remember exactly where I was when the the trade up news in the 2021 NFL draft happened. I think I'll remember where I was when this news broke as well. It's it's a it's a moment. It's a decision that can change the the course of a franchise. And as you've talked about, that could be for bad. You know, if you know this doesn't work out, he gets injured, and you're without really any picks next year. And it could change it for good. I mean, in, in a, a number of months' time, this team could be hoisting a Lombardi trophy. You never know. So this is a potential turning point in the franchise, you know, of, of the San Francisco 49ers. There's there's no doubt about it. Uh, and it is – I am so excited to see how it how it's going to, to work out. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting. Well, that, that's the big part, too, is, look, no matter what, it won't be the same. I mean, whatever this season was going to be, better, worse, in the middle, it is not that anymore because of how big this trade is. And and to put it in perspective, Mark, you know, midseason trades also don't really happen that often, especially ones of this magnitude. I know that the Rams went out and got Jalen Ramsey. That was a huge one a couple of years ago. But if you're the 49ers, the biggest in-season trade at least the two that I can think of would be for Emmanuel Sanders in 2019. Yeah. And then of course the trade that brought Jimmy Garoppolo here from the Patriots, um, you know, when Kyle Shanahan came here. But if you're, if you're talking about impactful mid season trades that resulted in a team taking off the first place that this trade brought my mind to Mark was 2010 when the Buffalo Bills traded Marshawn Lynch to the Seattle Seahawks. And I understand Seattle is a is a nemesis of, of San Francisco. And a big reason why is because Beast Mode went to the Pacific Northwest and ran them to a playoff win when they were a 7-9 playoff team. Mm-hmm. The Beast Quake, huh? The Beast Quake against New Orleans. That is the type of magnitude, no pun intended, that this move... <laughs> could have for San Francisco, but on a larger scale because you have a better team, you have a win-now roster, you have a a head coach that people have wondered if he's all in or not. Well, this absolutely says that he is. And when you're talking about you know future implications for a franchise, 
it will not be the same this season because of tonight. So this is absolutely a situation that I'm in agreement with you that fans, for good or for worse, will remember where they were when Christian McCaffrey donned the red and gold. It's it's ridiculous. I, I am I'm we're 30 minutes in and I am still just absolutely floored that we're having this conversation. I mean, Kyle Shanahan, you know, we, we've talked about a lot generally has he likes to limit the risks that he takes. That That's generally the kind of guy that he is trading up the draft Trey Lance, a gigantic risk. But I think most fans, most people, I think you and I are both in agreement on this. Say what you want about the pick of the actual player, Trey Lance. You know, that was the right move to try to get your quarterback of the future because you had, yeah. you know, but it's been proven to you, Kyle Shanahan, and, and to, to fans of the 49ers that Jimmy Garoppolo probably not good enough to be your quarterback of the future. I think it was the right move. It was a risky move, but probably the right move, probably worth the risk. This you would probably have to agree with, but still, I, I think it takes a lot of guts from everyone in the 49ers organization. And specifically Kyle Shanahan, because, I mean, if something like this does not work out, uh, I mean, say what you want about John Lynch and his title as general manager. He obviously has a, a voice and has an impact on the decisions, but this is Kyle Shanahan's team. He is steering this ship. He, It's going where he directs it. If something like this doesn't work out, Kyle Shanahan is under fire. So the fact that he has the guts to make a move like this, again, I think, and I, I, I think you agree that this was worth the risk, and it was considering what the cost was, the right move. It's, it's, it could not, it could end poorly as we've talked about, but considering everything, probably the right move. But still, it takes a certain level of, I don't know, self awareness, guts, confidence in yourself that you can make this work to make a move like this. Because if it doesn't work out you could be on your way out of an organization that you have dreamt of coaching for a really long time. So I applaud Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers for being willing for being willing to take this risk because they have proven a lot in the past that they haven't been willing to. And uh, I'm glad that they did this time. Yeah. And that that's another part of this too, is look, Kyle Shanahan in previous years, he kind of had one foot in one foot out as far as trying to acquire talent, trying to you know, maybe develop it to some point, how he's going to use guys, Jimmy Garoppolo, Debo Samuel. I know he went all in with him last year, but there's been a lot of, I don't want to call it tiptoeing, but a lack of direction, at least from a, from a, from a aesthetic standpoint, you know, as a viewer, not really knowing where the future of the 40 matters was going. This is absolutely. And to your point, uh, a place that does demand guts, that does demand confidence, and at least sort of aligns you, I think, with where a lot of people had hoped that the 49ers could get to, which is a point where, obviously, you'd love to have the best team. You'd love to be a clear-cut number one in your own conference, nevertheless, in the NFL. But that's not usually the way things go. The way things go is you're in contention, you have a chance, and then you hope that either – you know, uh, an available player or a big time performance, some differentiation in game can get you over the top of your opponent to, of course, win a Super Bowl. That's why the Rams went out and got Matthew Stafford last year. That's why they went out and got Jalen Ramsey, as we talked about in 2019. And the whole slogan that you brought up earlier, the whole F them picks is something that is now permeating clearly, not only through the NFL, but specifically in the NFC West. So I, I'm just, I, I can't, it's it's hard to digest right now exactly the way that I'm feeling about this move, but it has to be excitement for good or bad if you're a fan. I, I do I would I am with you that I believe that the excitement should be positive, but even if you're worried, you have to be excited about what's going to happen this year because even if you don't think the move was right or if it's gonna work. Well, you're forced to watch it play out now because you know exactly what the 49ers are doing, which is jumping headfirst into the deep end and trying to do what the Rams did last year, which is win the Super Bowl. Absolutely. 100%. I'm in total agreement with you. Uh, a couple of interesting nuggets, I guess. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's dad, it's been well documented. Yep. Um, you know, the you know they're Bay Area guys, and you know he spent a lot of time with the Broncos. Um, but he played for the 49ers in the 1994, which was the most recent year 
Uh, the Niners won the Super Bowl, so kind of a full circle moment for the McCaffrey family. And uh, you think back to Christian McCaffrey when he was dominating the uh, Pac-12 conference and when he was a member of the Stanford Cardinal, maybe the best game of his college career came at Levi's Stadium. He had 461 all-purpose yards in the 2015 Pac-12 title game for Stanford against USC. So uh, Christian McCaffrey, maybe he feels right at home on, on Levi's Stadium. Maybe he does. And a step further on the McCaffrey connection, his father, Ed, played for, not with the 49ers, but for the Denver Broncos, one Mike mm. Shanahan. And now his son has a chance to play for Mike's son, Kyle, in San Francisco, mind you. But still, there's a there's a little you know father-son connection at multiple levels here, Mark. And it, it really is. You're right. It's a full circle. It really is. It's interesting. And I, I, for one, am just so excited to see how it all pans out. I, th I think most I, all 49er fans are that way as well. I'm not sure how much of him we'll see on Sunday. Uh, it looks like at least, you know, he'll be active and, and suited up and ready to roll. But once he gets fully, um, uh, you know, digest the playbook fully and he's able to fully understand the depths of the of the Kyle Shanahan scheme, and Kyle Shanahan is able to fully unleash him. I just can't wait to see what this dude is going to be able to do in red and gold. Because uh, the, uh, when was the last time the Niners had a, a running back as, I don't know, decorated as him? I mean, Frank Gore is phenomenal, a phenomenal career, but never as, you know, never any individual great moments or great seasons as Christian McCaffrey. Frank Gore stacked up good seasons year after year after year after year, but you have to go back a really long time to find a, a more talented, you know, can't miss, don't look away running back in the 49ers uh, than Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, no, Frank Gore never did accrue nearly 200, uh, 12, <laughs> or pardon me, 2,400 yards in a single season. Not quite. Not quite. Uh, so, no, he did have the consistency. He was not nearly as prolific as C-Mac. Also, another thing to add to that, um, just a couple more minutes here on the 415ers, but, you know, Christian McCaffrey, after the week six loss to the Rams with Carolina, uh, all by all accounts was reported to be pretty dejected in the locker room, yeah. didn't have a lot to say. The only thing he said was, all I want to do is win. And now he has the chance to do it in a place that he's familiar with. As we laid out, he's got connections to on multiple levels and he's got a head coach that will certainly do his best to unlock hopefully the best version of Christian McCaffrey as scary as that sounds after saying the guy got 2,400 yards in the season. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's going to be wild. It's ridiculous. Oh, All right. I can't believe they pulled this off. Jeez. Yeah, neither can I, honestly. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go try and go to sleep at some point, but it might take a while. Uh, well, <laughs> I was thinking earlier, I guarantee you Kyle Shanahan is not sleeping tonight. He is up on his iPad, drawn play, drawn up plays. There is no doubt about it. I imagine Kyle Shanahan is more of a pencil and pad old school type cat. He's probably got 16 different kinds of colored pens, <laughs> 10 different kinds of colored highlighters. And the man is just, he's in football heaven right now. Like, you know, whether it's a whiteboard or, or an iPad, um, that guy's mind is probably moving at a thousand miles a minute right now because he just got someone that like, He's never had a, a, a player like Christian McCaffrey. As great as Debo is, as great as Debo was last year, uh, as great as some of his weapons were in, in Atlanta, as, as great as I'm sure some players that he's had on previous rosters when he's been a coordinator for, um, there's been no one like Christian McCaffrey, man. No. And it, I, you're right. He's, he's in football heaven. He's in Nirvana. This is what he's always wanted to do, to be able to dr scheme up offenses, uh, you know, plays for a team full of stars. I mean, you, you look now at, you know, we've talked a lot about pass catchers for the 49ers. You know, you got Kittle, Ayuk, and Debo. You think about just pure weapons, you know, all positions, all skill positions, running backs to tight ends to wide receivers. You'd be hard pressed now to find an offense with more talent in those positions than the 49ers. There probably isn't one across the NFL. This is, I'm I'm ready to say it. This is the most talented skill position unit 
in the NFL. McCaffrey, Debo, Kittle, Ayuk, and more. There is no group more talented than that. I think I think you're onto something. And look, if someone wanted to debate you, uh, they better come correct because <laughs> Look, like you're talking about Debo and C-Mac being in the backfield together. Well, when Elijah Mitchell comes back, you can just put Christian McCaffrey in the slot. Split you can put wide. him on the out. Yep. You can put him on the outside. Put him uh, anywhere. You can put Debo in the backfield. You can split Christian McCaffrey out wide. Uh, you can do so much more with motion in the backfield, misdirection. I mean, oh, oh. Just think oh. of think of all the misdirection and the the pre-snap movement that Shanahan is going to pull off with Kittle coming in motion with Ayuk lined up as a fullback with Christian McCaffrey, you know, behind or next to Jimmy Garoppolo, Debo Samuel off to one side, Ayuk split out wide. It is going to make defensive coordinators head hurt. They're going to have migraines all week preparing for this team because the options are literally limitless to what Kyle Shanahan can do both pre-snap and during the actual play. Yeah, I know this is a family-friendly podcast, Mark, but there's going to be a lot of bedwetting on the other sideline. Like, I, I'm, I'm telling you, man, the, there's going to be cats that are going to be, um, you know, for lack of better terms, uh, trying to figure out what's going to happen because you might find yourselves uh, with a little trickling down your leg in the third quarter when you can't figure out where Christian McCaffrey is going to line up. There was a, a great moment. I forget the podcast actually i might be able to, to look it up really quick but it was um not this past off season but the um off season before after uh, her i found it it's flying coach with sean yep. McVay and peter schrager from the rear yep. um so it's sean McVay helps host that podcast and they had kyle shanahan on the off season before last year so the 2021 off season when they traded for matthew stafford and Sean mm-hmm. McVay asks Kyle Shanahan, uh, hey, so uh, what'd you think when we traded for Stafford? That's my best Sean McVay impression. Not very I'll give good. you a three. <laughs> what'd you think when we traded for Stafford? And now I just I'm just thinking in my head, is Kyle Shanahan picking up the phone and calling Sean McVay right now and saying, Hey, what'd you think when we traded for McCaffrey? Because this is on a different level than that. And I'm sure the Rams are not too thrilled about it. Kyle Shanahan might shave. I mean, <laughs> He, he he might be a brand new man when he walks onto the field at Levi Stadium on Sunday. Like that's how. Oh, uh, it's got to make you feel a little bit younger, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I that's about all the time we got for this four one fivers podcast. But uh, I'm glad we had the chance to sit down do an emergency pod, Mark, because this more than probably any other episode we've done so far <laughs> demands immediate attention. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Right, right, when, right when we right when the news broke, you texted the group. Uh, me and a, uh, a couple others here at 95.7 <laughs> The Game, and I was like, all right, we got to record a pod right now, right? And, oh, yeah. No, thank you, Kyle Shanahan. Thank you, Christian McCaffrey. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm just going to go. I, and no, I know not everyone can hear is listening to the podcast, but uh, here in my room I got this this portrait of a woman you know, looking into the distance silently and just pondering her existence. And uh, you know, that's, that's essentially what I'm just going to do. I'm just going to sit here and wonder what could be with the 49ers this season. Cause I had no clue. It could be a super bowl, but it feels like it's going to be something spectacular and it's going to be something exciting. So that's what I'm going to go do, Mark. I was going to say that's uh, that portrait behind you. It, it might be what uh, Panthers fans are doing for the rest of the season <laughs> because they are not going to be watching much football. <laughs> oh mark that's a great point Uh, i don't want this podcast episode to end but unfortunately it must a reminder as always to download rate and subscribe for episodes like this five stars are encouraged mark grandy evan giddings as always follow us on social i'm at egiddings 10 mark is at mark grandy mark with a c grandy with an i mark thank you so much my man this has been a lot of fun Yes, it has. Exciting, exciting, exciting times for the 49ers. Can't wait to to break down that Chiefs game. No doubt. We'll be coming at you on Monday. Who knows? Christian McCaffrey might find the end zone. You'll find out. We'll find out, and we'll react to it on Monday. You've been listening to the 415ers podcast on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7 The Game. We'll talk to you next time.